everyone, how are you? It's Casey. I am back with a repair video today. Now, this one I'm a little concerned about because I went back and read the notes. Oftentimes, um, I'll get an inquiry message about repairing a doll. Um, and then by the time we sort everything out and the doll arrives to me, I forget. <laughs> most of the time what what the doll needed because I have a couple and I'm usually working on more than one so I just went back to read what she needed and so this was a doll that she bought I believe on eBay um, that she thought was going to come perfectly fine and it came with problems one of them being the hair and she asked me about replacing the hair and I said, oh yeah, no problem, I can do that. Well, just now when I went back and reread her message, I realized that she said it was an SBL. You all know how much SBLs seem to find me. Um, and, well, she doesn't look as bad as it sounded. Um, SBLs have a different head or a different scalp um, than um, other dolls. So I do not think we are going to be able to change her hair. I also don't know how glued the hair is. Um, and so it does appear to be very glued. So, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to uh, fix the hair for her. She had a couple things. One, she wanted to change the hair. Um, she wanted a light face up because she attempted to fix the doll herself. And you can tell that um, the makeup has been removed in some places, but it's not even and then she wanted new lashes. But now that I know this is an SBL doll, um, the problem is going to be that taking her apart might not be possible, which will make doing all of that stuff somewhat hard. Um, we can do her lashes from the outside if they're not glued in too hard. Um, and we technically can do a face up. Uh, however, with the uneven paint and color the way that it is, I really think that that color needs to be sanded off before we try to add any color. And I would prefer to do that with a doll that's not put together. So, as always, what I think is going to be somewhat simple turns into not simple. So my plan of attack is that we are going to try to take her apart and see um, maybe she will come apart very easily. If she does not, the next option would be to maybe soak this hair. Now, the thing that concerns me about soaking a doll that's already been customized is if water gets into the eye chips it could damage them and we may have to replace them um, since she wants to replace the lashes anyway it won't really matter if it hurts the lashes um, but that's kind of the problem with an SBL so let's first see if we can get her apart uh, that will make everything easier I know that there is a possibility to use a scalp on an SBL. That's what I did with my Roxy Baby girl because I, if you remember, I had purchased <laughs> again an SBL doll, which is Roxy Baby, um, without realizing or thinking about the fact that the scalp that I wanted to use on her was not going to fit because it was for an RBL. and. Um, but I refused to accept that. <laughs> and so I modified it and glued it on. So I think, you know, we can do that. It will just be a matter if we can get this original scalp off this doll. 
So with SBLs, sometimes um, they're known for having pry marks. Um, and so what I found with any sort of prying is if you stick something in, you just wanna make sure that you sort of pry on that inside ridge that's in there because if there's any marks, it will be on that. And then just to go very slowly so that you don't actually pry the outside or put marks on the outside of the faceplate. If you do, then they should you should sand them. They're very easy to sand off. I see a lot of artists not sand them and I'm not quite sure why they leave them on there. So it's looking like the scalp is pretty glued on there. It's not gonna just pop off. Um, at least it doesn't feel like it. So it doesn't look like it's glued um, very strongly. So the other option would be to cut it off, but I'm most likely going to want to talk with her owner before doing any sort of cutting because cutting, um, ooh, looks like it's coming off. Look at that. Um, cutting can damage it and I'm just, she did seem like, um, she really doesn't like <laughs> the doll and would be appreciative of it being fixed in any way. So let's see if we can just peel that right off of there. That's exciting. Okay, woohoo! That worked, so that's good. Now we should be able to get it apart. Um, we just, SBLs are, are very tricky as far as things getting um, broken. So we just wanna be very, very careful. Okay, so we don't have to take the dome off of the front plate, but we are gonna have to replace the strings just so we can take her apart. So let's just cut those off so they're out of our way. So as you can see, the scalp of an uh, SBL is not attached to the dome. Um, so there is a possibility that we can take a scalp off of an RBL, uh, hair and glue it on here, which is what I think we're going to try to do. So let's take that off. And so we don't have to remove this dome part to do the customization. So we're just going to take out her mech. Um, and then I think we'll do a little light sanding to get the rest of that color off. I feel like maybe we should do a before picture. I always forget to do before and after pictures. So let me get, grab my camera and at least take a before of her face. Okay, so I've sent a message off to her owner to make sure that she, because she purchased this scalp, this is the, re the replacement scalp she wanted, which it's beautiful and silky. And this original scalp is very scratchy and she had used some Sharpie to try to um, repair some of the problems. So I really think that no matter what, this scalp is gonna look better. It also has bangs, so it should not um, be too noticeable. But because it's an SBL, what we need to do is separate the scalp that holds the hair from the dome. And I've never actually done that by trying to pry it out. Um, and it will probably ruin it if she doesn't want to do that. So I've sent her a message. I've started kind of trying to pry it. If I can't pry it out, we can cut it off and it'll be fine. But I want to make sure that she's okay with that first since she purchased this. Um, so we're going to set that aside for now until we hear from her. And we're going to start on fixing the face up. Um, so for face ups, I do not normally order, um, offer face-ups, so I just want to put that out there right now. Um, and I'm not planning to do like a full face-up on this doll. Um, so please, I love you all, but don't message me about doing face-ups because I just don't do them. They're very time-consuming, and my goal with sort of my repair service is not um, to customize dolls as commissions for anyone. Let me move down here. 
because I don't do commissions. I don't do custom commissions and I don't do face up commissions. And that's mainly because I don't have time. Um, I barely have time to do dolls that I want to work on. I get very few dolls a year done, as most of you know. So I don't offer that service is all I'm trying to say. But to me, this is a little bit more of a repair and an evening out and less um, a complete face up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a very light sandpaper to get off the majority of the blush that's been damaged. Um, and this shouldn't really take very long. And then we're gonna add some color. And again, I'm not gonna go wild on the coloring. Um, we're just gonna try to make her look better, basically. The problem when you start removing coloring from a doll is you don't know how many layers or how the artist has painted her. So for example, I think that the customer was trying to fix the cheeks, but by removing the color on the cheeks, she's made her look like a raccoon because there's coloring uh, around the eyes. You know, and, and we're not gonna remove her brows, but we'll do our best um, to work around them. So let's do some sanding here. We'll do our best to get as much off. I'm using a low grit sandpaper. This is uh, 1000. It's not taking it off very quickly but I also really don't want to create any more damage. But it does feel weird. It feels like it's not really removing it. So we might have to go up, up in the sandpaper department. I'm not going to touch the lips at all. They look pretty good. It's really that spot right there. thing is um, we're probably going to want to sand off as much of this glue as possible because if we're going to put this new scalp on um, we want a smooth surface for the glue so for that though I want a stronger sandpaper being pretty careful not to get uh, like I just did on the face plate um, then you have to sand down these stronger marks. basically just don't want to feel any glue along that ridge or at least the least amount possible because any glue on there is going to make not only the new scalp not stick very well but it might make it sort of stand up and not um, it not lay down completely flat because it will be bumpy so that's kind of why we want to get that out of there So one thing about this process of putting an RBL scalp or modifying it to be on an SBL by basically just gluing on the hair part, um, um, I just totally lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, what I was going to say is the thing that you really want to do is 
if you can use a scalp, the RBL scalp with bangs, that's going to be probably your best bet in case there's any anything showing. The bangs will cover it up. So I often get get customers wanting to buy a new scalp for their doll, and it may not match exactly, like the color. But as long as it has bangs, it's pretty high up on on the the scalp, and it covers it pretty easily. You don't really have to worry about it showing. It's the dolls without bangs that anything at the top is is potentially going to be seen. So that's really the only thing. But this customer did choose one with bangs, so that's good. Probably not on purpose. It's just that the original scalp had bangs and she was trying to find something similar. I'm concerned about the coloring around the mouth because I really don't want to get too close to her lips, but I'm concerned that it's not going to blend very well. All right, I'm going to give her a wash and see in my bigger light how she looks. She's got quite a bit of makeup around her upper lip on this side that looks like it might be a problem, but I'm wondering if we'll be able to blend that. I don't want to go too far with sanding her, so let's wash her and see what she looks like. All right, so I had to set up my light. It's a pretty overcast day, but it's not super dark, but I just cannot see very well. So, um... I'm not super thrilled with a couple spots, specifically here, her lip, upper lip, I guess I should say, and but I'm getting dangerously close to her actual lips and there's a little spot under here so I think we're gonna just leave that my concern is just how well it's going to blend it might blend very easily and not matter but I also don't want to have to do lots and lots of layers. But some of these spots have very um, like sharp edges where it looks very obvious that something has been sanded and I think those are gonna be harder to blend. The forehead has a lot smoother variations on the color and I don't think it's gonna be hard to blend that, but some of these spots around the mouth and nose I'm worried about. All right, so we're gonna wash her again, and I think that we can go ahead and spray her and see if we can blend her a little bit. So the other doll I have on my table is a doll that a customer purchased this doll from my shop and wanted some light customization to her doll. So we're gonna go ahead and take her apart so that we can spray her at the same time we're gonna spray this other customer's doll. Um, 
So I've been doing more light customizations and they seem to be very popular. So go over to my shop and check them out. So light customizations are typically kind of considered anything that, um, I mean, in my mind, light customization is anything that's not carved for the most part. So changing the body, the eyes, maybe the eyelashes. Um, I get a lot of people that want me just to spray, spray matte the face so it's not shiny. Um, add some very simple things like freckles and eyebrows and things like that. So I don't do any coloring on them or anything like that. Um, but they come out super cute and I have a lot of fun putting outfits together. Oh, the other big one is haircut. I'm not doing a haircut on this doll. Haircutting takes a really long time on these dolls, honestly. Um, so this doll, she again wants eyebrows, the face matted, um, add some pull strings that I made. Um, eye chips and she purchased an outfit for her also that she would like her to come dressed in so she really is going to be like a a um, custom lightly custom doll I guess um, but to start on that process we do need to spray her with Mr. Super Clear so I figure we might as well and because I'm doing pull strings I don't need this uh, spring or pull string so let's get that off of there it's usually one of the things that's frustrating and in the way because when I do these light customizations I do spray the back plate as well um, just so that it matches so we'll go ahead and get her disassembled So here are our dolls. Let's get them sprayed and we'll start on the rest of the process. All right, so I've talked with her owner and we are going to separate the scalp from the dome. But first, let's um, try to fix up this coloring. So it looks like the original artist really only used pinks and reds. Um, so we're gonna see if we can kind of match what she's done and um, even out the color. So I'm mostly just going to be using kind of a raspberry pink um, to go around and fix it. So let's do that. <laughs> So the forehead has a, some weird splotchiness that I'm not quite sure about because it had looked really smooth. That actually had looked like the smoothest part before I got started. Um, so I think we're going to have to do another spray so that we can do one more layer um, just to make sure that everything looks 
really even. And to make sure those little lip issues look good but I already think she looks a lot better so we're gonna go ahead and spray her um, and do one more layer while she is outside drying with her mr. super clear we're gonna go ahead and prepare the scalp and so um, oh, there's hair everywhere from it so as I said, we are going to have to separate the scalp from the dome. And I did start to try to pry it. I've never been able to pry one off. Um, and so we're not gonna keep going that direction. We're going to actually cut it off. So now the main thing about cutting it off is we are cutting off these little um, phalanges in there. And we wanna make sure that we don't butcher any part of the dome that's going to be, or any part of the scalp that's going to sit against her head. We don't want that to be damaged, otherwise it can be seen. So we want to cut very carefully with our X-Acto knife. Now you see I already got it a little bit there. So um, it's really easy to do as you do this. So. We will be careful as we go along. Um, and we'll fix that little spot. You also have to kind of pull and see if you've got it because deep down in there it can still be attached a little bit. So you have to go back over a spot you've already gone. If you can pull it out without cutting it, that is ideal because you'll dam you'll have left less of a chance of damaging it. Um, it's just not always possible. And you can trim them later once it's separated. So it's really just a matter of getting it off this dome. And this is the part where I'd already pulled it out a little bit. So I'm just gonna... For some reason, my camera stopped recording um, when I was pulling off the end of the scalp. So let me tell you what I did after that point. I did go back and trim as much as I could around the edges to get uh, the edge as smooth as possible. So what ends up causing problems with gluing a scalp like this onto an SBL dome is um, because it's not made for that dome, it, it, any bumps along here can make it stick up, uh, which is what will make it not look smooth and, and perfect. So as much as you can get off of here that's gonna cause any bumps, the better. So that was, I believe, all I said when the camera stopped. So I'm gonna put that aside for now and the doll should be dry in just a minute. So we'll go out and get her and see what we need to do for the next layer. Alrighty, so she is looking lots better. The only other thing that I realized is that the scalp that she chose is a white color so unfortunately it's not going to match perfectly but again she has bangs so we should be able to make it work so i'm still not happy with how splotchy this forehead looks but the rest of it is looking much better 
So let's put another layer on. I don't know what's going on with this forehead. It's the only part that is not blending. I'm wondering what was used to remove the paint originally. If it wasn't sanded and some kind of chemical was used. It could be that the the plastic is a little bit altered now. I don't know. This is why I normally do not want to redo <clears throat> any kind of um, face up. understand how dolls get quite so damaged either. I'm happy with her lips and I'm pretty happy with um, the other parts of her, her cheeks and her chin, even though her chin has a couple strange splotches as well. definitely is an improvement. It's not perfect. It probably wouldn't satisfy me if I was making this doll to sell or something. Um, but I think that her owner will be happy. I'm just seeing a lot of strange um, Lord help me, you guys, this camera keeps stopping in the middle of me talking. So I think that I fixed the problem, and I'm just going to have to remember to keep checking and making sure it's going. FYI, I'm going this week to get a new phone. It's my phone that I use for my camera. So here she is. She's still a little splotchy. Um... But I think she's going to be fine. I don't know how short we want to go with the bangs. Um, so I might tell her owner if we leave the bangs a little bit longer. It really is going to cover up a lot of that forehead splotchy. Even if we cut them it will still help. And so I think with the hair on she looks fine. And I did tell her owner that I wasn't um, going to do an entire face up. She said she just wanted blush. And so I think she is a lot better than she was. So the other thing that I forgot about um, with modifying the scalp to fit on the SBL is that you actually have to cut off part of the dome of the SBL so that the scalp has space to fit. Otherwise, there'll be a large gap, which if I remember right, was not a big deal. You just need your Dremel, which maybe is more of a big deal to some people. So you will want to be very, very careful that you don't um, damage your face up while you're cutting the dome shorter. And really all that needs to be done is a hole, a circle needs to be cut. The very tip of the dome needs to be cut off. So it's not the whole thing. So I use a bit it will kind of go in and um, basically go around in a circle. So I'm not going to be able to talk and we're going to be really careful about this um, and let's do it. So you notice the plastic gets wrapped around the bit 
and so you do sometimes have to stop and get it off it's not always easy to get off sometimes you have to use your knife sometimes it comes off like that super easy this bit feels like it's not tight okay it does not have to look pretty um it just has to create space so it may not be enough we may have to do it more but we'll put it on and see Got all these parts here i think that that's probably good enough so now you can see the scalp will be flush with the uh face plate so that's the only purpose of that is to make space in there um, and making sure that the front is nice and perfect is is the most important part if you have a little bit of a gap in the back it's really not going to affect the look of the doll so that looks good so the next thing for this doll before we can put her back together is she does need new lashes and we did cut her strings off so we're gonna have to put um, new string on her the owner did buy some lashes so let me grab those so we can put them in so these are the lashes that she chose so we're gonna go ahead and put them in um, before we put the eye Mac in so these are pretty thick compared to what she had Let's get them trimmed. Alright, let's grab some strings. So even though she had pull rings, she still had sleep eyes. So we're going to put that back together the same way. awkward to get in an SBL when you have that dome on there. Oh, there we go. Hopefully we didn't hurt our lashes. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So I think she already looks a lot better, especially with the new lashes. And let's find her T-bar. So these are hers. This must be hers because it's already trimmed. the camera back up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing 
Hopefully it's still running. Yes. Okay. So one of the hardest things about an SBL is getting all the parts to line up. Because she has this weird body and the back plate has to go down into the dome and all of that. So. Her dome is actually broken also, so. Hold on. there is a broken part in there that is preventing it from closing on that side. So I think I am officially becoming the queen of the SBLs. What do you guys think? Oh, come on. this piece down in here. So let's see if we can get that out of there.
All right, well, I'm going to try and hurry up and just finish this video because my phone has decided it is not gonna record anything for me. It keeps saying it's full even though I delete everything on my phone. So, very irritating. I did finally get her together, so I'm really glad about that. So we're gonna put her pull rings on and then basically the process with the scalp is just gonna take time to glue it. So we're gonna get some rubber bands. Um, the main thing is just trying to keep it as flat as possible as you go around. Um, but this one looks like it's gonna fit very good because we did a lot of prep work. So as you can see, it's definitely not perfect. It's a little bit larger, um, but we'll leave any, any problems in the back. Um, so I'm going to use E6000 glue. It's a bit milder. I would not use a super glue on it all. So I'm gonna use E6000 and then do rubber bands to hold it in place as it dries. So it'll take a couple of days um, and then we will cut and style it and I think she'll be a lot better than she was when she arrived. So I will show the final process, as soon as the scalp has dried, I will show you the end result. All right, welcome back everyone. So, since I have been gluing her for the past couple days, I actually got a new phone camera. And I don't know about you, but switching technology is something that I just hate. So I had the same phone, which was a hand-me-down when I got it, for five years because I did not want to deal with the new technology. But I bit the bullet because I had to do it. Um, and I'm still having problems now with the new phone. And one of the things that I discovered this morning is this brand new iPhone does not have a headphone jack, which is what I plug my microphone into and what I also go on my runs with to listen to my podcasts. So a little frustrated today, but I thought I would go ahead and shoot this video with the microphone that's in the phone. Hopefully it's recording well and you're gonna be able to hear me, I don't know. I have also ordered a wireless Bluetooth microphone that should be here later this week. So we're forging ahead with new technology. Um, but I wanna get this video done because it's a really nice day, the light is good, and she is glued. So as you can see, the seam line is pretty near perfect. Um, in the front, there is a little bit in the back that's not perfect, and a lot of this was because of um, the back plate not being perfectly smooth but it's still pretty darn good. Um, the color of course is off, but as I said, we're not gonna see that really at all, so it shouldn't really matter. So this was her original scalp, and so I'm about ready to do the haircut on her. I think she wanted the length about the same. I'm not positive, so I'm just going to do um, kind of close to the length and I'm not gonna take as much off the bangs and then I'm gonna send her a photo and see what she thinks and see if she wants more cut off or not. And then we do still need to put her little pull rings back on. So I'm not gonna do the haircut on camera because again, it always, it's really hard to show because um, I have to move her around so much. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the haircut now and put her pull rings on and then I'm gonna take some photos and show you guys the final product of modifying this SBL scalp with an RBL. I think she looks really good, a lot better than she did when she arrived. So I'm really hoping her owner is gonna be happy with her. So let's do that and then I'll share some photos. Um, I don't think I'm gonna come on and record more. So as always, you know, thanks so much for watching subscribe, all of that good stuff. And thanks for bearing with me with all this techno technological things. Um, see you all again soon. Bye.